like all the studies that have been done on a uh, dyslexia, you're not stupid. It's just you can't get the information out. And what price are you on per mi- for your milk as of now? Just now. This, this is we'll the, what be... is this? The fourth of August. We mm-hmm. are today. What's? Yeah, I think we're round about now because I've got children. Mm-hmm. You're looking at it and going, "My dad must have been off his head." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've been Cami. I've been Iona. And we are both Fed Fed by by Farmers. Farmers. Hello and welcome to the Fed by Farmers podcast with me, Cami Wilson. And me, Iona Murray. We are going to be joined today by Andrew Welsh, who is sitting in the room with us just now. Andrew, if you're here, give us a sign. Oh, oh, (laughs) Jesus. Wow, you hear that? Is is he here? <laughs> so we're going to speak to him very soon, but before we do that, I know what do we have to do? We have to thank our sponsors, Cammy. Who are? Crystalix and Animax. Yeah, shout out to Crystalix and Animax. We're going to hear a bit more about them later on the podcast. And of course, if you want to support us here at Fed by Farmers, have a look at the website, fedbyfarmers.co.uk, or drop into your local Cars Billington. Yeah, shout out to Cars. They stock in the stuff as well. Actually, I think Cars are about the only people that have any of the stock left because we're just about sold I out. I know. So if you see something on the website you like and it's sold out, Check out cars. Check out their website. Yeah. Anyway, we'll hear more about sponsors soon. Let's speak to Andrew. Andrew, thanks for joining us. No, it's a pleasure. We're going to talk about, you know, your, your farming background story. You've done a bit of travelling. Farm with dyslexia, we're going to talk a bit about that. I think it's a really important message. Oh, it is. We'll just, we'll just see where things things take Look us at you with it's a an, plan. It's another dairy farmer on too, which ticks a lot of boxes. Yeah. Get a lot of comments saying we need more dairy farmers. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're just so busy. So busy. <laughs> Allegedly. <laughs> mornings and afternoons I don't know what to do the rest of the day but no I'm all joking you're just you, if you're a busy dairy farmer you're just not a big enough dairy farmer is that right? that's exactly right you've not uh, got enough cows I don't get enough cows <laughs> if you had enough cows you wouldn't need to milk them anymore so <laughs> uh, tell us a bit about yourself we'll start with so, some numbers do we? P- Michael Blanche always starts with numbers okay. so like acres stock well, we can do like that, that. Age. age Hmm. so it's a bit like a dating app so, exactly that. Mm-hmm. Am I going to swipe Give us your bio. Um, I was 43 yesterday. No, Happy birthday. No, it wasn't yesterday. It was Friday. It's two days ago. Okay. Uh, so 43. Uh, I'm in a partnership with my older brother and parents. So we're farming round about 1,100 acres now, all round Waterside and Moscow. And they uh, recently took on some ground that takes us right into Fennec now. Uh, we're milking just shy of 300 cows. Total head of stock now is just over a thousand. We're busy. We also do all our own field works, so slurry, silage, ploughing, combining. It's all in house. So we do love our toys as well. So have yeah. you always finished your books? No, we used to sell them as big stores. Right. So you were looking for guys that were looking for just the last few months where they could just fast track them. Mm-hmm. They pay big money for them, but they're also not keeping them for too long, not spending too much money on them. And that worked away fine. Uh, but then it was one of the guys we, we sold to just said, come on guys, you're missing a trick here. Try finishing them. Uh, but it's space. It's need another shed. So there's another couple hundred thousand. We've made it work. Uh, it's tight at times, but uh, but we're, we're finishing our, well, I should have said at the beginning, we're milking pure Frisian cows. So they do, they take a wee bit of time. We're finishing... Uh, Frisian bullocks up to, we'll take them up to about 28 months and they're finishing uh, around about O plus. We get the odds, R4L. Our Angus crosses are finishing nearly every single one will be a, a, an R4L. What does that mean? Uh, so that's their grade. So that's what the okay. slaughterhouse is looking for. And the slaughterhouses are usually phoning us for them. So that's a. So a is bonus. it a myth that bull calves are getting killed? We've we've never done it. <laughs> it was it was it was something that was done. It was an easy way of getting rid mm-hmm. of that problem. I don't I don't think any of them do it now. I don't think. Do they not? Do well, most milk contracts it's stipulated that you're it. not allowed it anyway. Okay. So even if plus, but I think there's that much money in beef. Aye. Now, it doesn't matter to it as a Holstein. You you can you just keep feeding it and feeding it. And, and Maybe just get... just say what a Holstein is as well. So Holstein is your what you would call a typical dairy cow now. So it's been bred or designed to produce milk, Mm -hmm. and that's about it. It doesn't carry much flesh. It puts all its energy into producing milk, where our Frisians don't produce quite as much milk. 
they carry a wee bit more flesh on them. They're excellent grazers, so we can have them outside as many days as we can through the summer. So they'll go out and graze and milk well off it. Mm -hmm. Usually when milk drops, beef goes up. When beef drops, milk mm -hmm. goes up. Mm -hmm. And it, it does keep a... You look over 10 years, it's pretty steady. Uh, but it is a lot of work. When you look at our place, we've got four steadings. Uh, three of them have got housing for cattle. So it's a lot of extra work, a lot of slurry. Oh, you've got actually like four farm steadings? Like, yeah. So uh, actual bases? Bases, yeah, yeah. so where the dairy is, that's the main one. Because that's where all the action is. But then we've got uh, Arm Laird and Arm S where we've got young stock down at my bit as well. It's just what we can fit in there, an overflow kind of And you calving all year round? No, we're calving batches, and that's so we're having batches of bullocks. Ah, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. And it's just for that reason. But that gives us time in the parlour to put a bit more attention into the heifers, mm -hmm. trying to get them trained train quicker. Train them on yeah. Because you've got a whole load of cows dried off. Interesting to me, the dairy thing, even it, it, those numbers, and of course there's much, much bigger outfits than, than yourself. Yeah. But I'm even just thinking for myself this year, moving forward, getting your tup buying season. And I'm trying to work out how many sheep I've got, mm -hmm. what tups I'm going to need for them, where I'm going to put them, et cetera, et cetera. But that's nothing compared to trying to work with 300 dairy cattle, deciding, you know, when they're being dried off, who's going to... Yeah. I mean, everything AI, is it? Or, no, in fact, no. batches will be bull with the bull. We're, we're working with bulls. Yeah. Another one that just keeps it simple. If the bull doesn't get them, there's either... Something wrong with the bull or something wrong with the, the cow or the heifer. Most of the time it's something wrong with the cow or heifer. Used to chuck them in with the batches of cows. Eh, don't do that as much now. We'll bring out the cows that we want. One, so we're not going through bulls like sweeties. Mm -hmm. You've got to watch the bloodlines. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we can pull cows off, double check, and then we can go, right, she can go with that bull or that bull. And who's who's doing all the this uh, science and maths? That's down to... Older brother and dad and mum. Is but it they, they, or is it like they, apps? No, they've just got it all in their head. Uh, in so, their head? Yep. So they can... Oh, my God. It's... Aye. So if they, they go snuff it, I'm screwed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll just buy new bills and you don't need to worry about the lines <laughs> crossing. <laughs> uh, but that, that's the biggest trouble as well, trying to find pure British Frisian bulls. Uh, Why is that an issue? Nobody wants to go down that route. They all want to produce litres, so they're going down the route okay. of Holsteins. But it's turning slowly. The Holsteins are not lasting, so they're putting a wee bit of freezing in them, uh, even a bit of Montbelliard as well, yeah. just to get them a wee bit tougher cow to make them last a bit longer. i got to take my hat off to Dad. He, All his friends all went to Holsteins, and he stuck with his Frisians. He's proud of his Frisians. Loves his cows, but not in the showy way. Just loves them because they've worked for him all his life and gave him a, a lifestyle that he's got so working twice a day every day no but uh, you say not in the showy way do you not show at all then is Don't it not strange to be so down the pure frisian route and not be like i, I imagine is there another herd around here that's pure frisian uh, there's two or three but where, where, where do you go to buy a frisian bill so we were getting a lot off of roberta dunbar uh, so that's a uh, What's Atlanta Market? <laughs> uh, yeah, Primrose. Primrose, of course, of course. We made the mistake a couple of, week, a couple of weeks ago in saying she worked in United Auctions. That was my mistake. It Ooh. just was a slip of the tongue. Lanark, yeah. of course. We need to get her on, actually. She'd be oh, good. Oh, she'd, she'd be our scream. Yeah, we'll get her uh, on. No, we, we used to sell some cattle through her. And, oh, you can, you can bounce off her. It's mm -hmm. brilliant. I remember one day she pulled in in a nice little mini. She gets out and... She's walking towards the slatted shed, and I was like, oh, Primrose, get your wellies on. And uh, there was a few wee Fs and Jeffs in there. <laughs> and it's uh, that's what you're for. You can go in the pen and move them around so I can see them at the front of the pen. But that's why she does so well. She's in a, she's in a male environment, and she... Holds her own. She can hold her own. Yeah. She yeah. sorts the men out from the boys. So. Yeah. So her sister... It's got a pure Frisian herd. That's where a lot of our bulls have come from. Uh, we've also bought a lot of bulls out of Carlisle, but you've got to watch for TB. That's oh, they're coming from south? Coming up from mm. down south, and there's a lot of cracking British Frisian herds down country, but it's the risk of 
bringing in TB, so we just stay well clear. We've also put some of our older cows to semen from Denmark. Yeah, I put um, your own. And that's that's what... And um, what price are you on per, for your milk as of now? Just now this, this is we'll the, what, be... Is this the 4th of August we are mm-hmm. today? What's... Yeah, I think we're around about kind of 38, 39 pence just now. That sounds we're, all right. We're, 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 we're okay. We've got higher butterfat, and another advantage with the Frisian. That gets us an extra, I think, about a penny and a half per litre. So it's And how many litres are you producing a day? So we're up to nearly 4,500 litres a day. Reduce the risk of fly strike and livestock irritation at grass with Crystalix garlics. Flies and midges are a constant pest to livestock throughout the summer and are responsible for diseases such as summer mastitis, pink eye, blue tongue and schmallenberg. No repellent is 100% effective in the fight against airborne biting insects. However, Crystalix garlics can play an important part in reducing the number of flies that land on livestock. Containing concentrated garlic extract, five times more potent than pure dried garlic, Crystalix garlics offers a natural defence to biting insects, with the high sulphur compounds in garlic acting as a natural insect repellent. With a full complement of vitamins, minerals and trace elements, Crystalix garlics balances the known deficiencies in forage while stimulating the rumen for enhanced animal performance. Make the switch this summer to research-proven Crystalix garlics. Is it quite a big uh, ego thing in dairy? Like it, it, that is. How much you're produ- is it, what's the big ego thing? Is it how much actual milk you're producing or how much your cows produce per day like on average? What's, what's, the, would, big, what's the big number in dairy? The, the flex. The, yeah, and what's the big flex? The big flex is, oh, I've got a cow that's producing so many kilos. But okay. the other one is, oh, I've got 250 cows, but I'm chucking out 8,000 litres. Ah, right, okay, <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's gonna, it's like, yeah, more litres, more money. Yeah, but then, exactly. is, does, does your guy, like, if who's your contract with? So we're with Miller. So there's so no you, you, to you, your maximum you, you can produce is yeah, this? Yeah, so you're, uh, you're forecasting three months ahead of yourself kind of thing. Uh, you have to tell them? You have to tell them, and you can't. You can deviate from it a little bit, but they're also watching what you produced last year. And if you go so many percent over what you produced last year for that month, you get penalised. So it's it's very hard unless you're speaking to them and going, I hear you need an extra milk, I'll chuck an extra 50 cows on. Yeah, because yeah. it surely it'll suit these contractors or, or these businesses like Muller. It would suit if the existing farmers just, when they need milk, rather than taking on a new farmer. Yep, for a new farmer, that's mm-hmm. extra miles for the lorry to travel. Yep. Yeah. They'd better go coming to us and saying, right, we're needing so many thousand litres more. Can you get us any more? Oh, yes. And, and just on talking about new farms, actually, I randomly heard on the podcast, it's farm, uh, farm, Farming Today, is it? It's the Radio 4 oh, Radio show. 4, yeah. And I was listening to their podcast, and I think they said that uh, dairy farms had reduced by 6% last year. I could, I could which equated to something like 300 dairy farms going off, but which has been a continuing trend. The number of dairy cows is the same. Yep. Really? Yep. Because the, the existing farms just get bigger. Yeah. Yep. They're bought by the neighbours. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. it's one less farmer. Yep. But it's still the same cows. Same area and, being milked and, mm-hmm. and probably slightly more litres, just been a bit more efficient than your, your smaller farmer. Yeah. You and it is, it's quite sad. Even round us, every farm was a dairy farm. Now it is two farms, ourselves and then Alton, where yeah. there would have been probably 14, 15 dairy farms on it. It's right. I always just, I feel we're quite, you know, I, I talk about this all the time and, and see when I go to these shows and, and, you know, going to the Royal Welsh and where it's Black Isle or wherever mm. we are, Yorkshire, and, and, you know, you spend all day talking to people in the stand, you know, folk come and talk to you and tell you about their farming thing and, like, I honestly think Ayrshire is just a, this absolute hidden gem. Like, right. I don't is. I don't feel that land prices are a fair reflection of the actual productive land we have. When you look at the rest of the country, I I mean, it's still a fortune, still a bloody fortune. (laughs) (laughs) But when I see the prices in other places, I mean, you cross the water, I mean, that's just a joke. But, like, you look at places down south, or even up Perth, can I wait, and stuff like that, it's like, land prices are wild. I find Ayrshire's quite even. Where you start going into some places, and it's your really best cracking ground, and then it's into marsh, or... Mm -hmm. Mm. Mossy stuff, or it's just fit for for sheep. Yeah, we, we, Ayrshire's got dairy country, and then it's got Muir Kirk. <laughs> I know, I know. Just, just nobody's really f- been in venture there to see how good it is. That's no, the trouble. I, I, well, that, that's it. They don't, they don't want MD to come up there. No, trust that, me. Trust me. That's why. That's poor farmers Muir Kirk. Um, <laughs> but no, yeah, I, I think the statistic with Ayrshire, and we maybe spoke about this before in the podcast. Mm-hmm. So I certainly have talked about it in Landlord, yeah. is that we have the most dairy farmers. Yep. 
I believe, I think it's Dumfries and Galloway have the most dairy cows. Mm -hmm. Can we hear a bit more about you and growing up? So, with myself, so I've always been interested in the farm, really all dad. He was just that busy with it, so mm -hmm. if we wanted to go anywhere with dad, we had to be helping him. So you were just dragged along. There were days we'd be sleeping in the tractor or we'd be helping them bed cubicles or spraying the, the teats in the, the parlour with mm -hmm. iodine. As with lots of families, there's a big split up. It's like, oh, I want to take it all on or I think we should just mm -hmm. go our separate ways. And our uncle was brave enough, I would say, to say, I've got no kids. I've had a divorce. I've had a nervous breakdown. Why not just get out? Mm -hmm. And he got out uh, right at the peak. In the early 90s, he got out when things were going good. You could have half a dozen workers and not worry about it. Uh, <laughs> ah, just, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you've you got three siblings. Yep, so I've got three brothers. I've got one older brother and then two younger brothers. So with dad buying out my uncle, money was tight. Every penny he'd saved was put into there. He was borrowing big money to take the brother out. So we were cheap labour. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so mm -hmm. we were primary school, age nine, we would come home from primary school driving the forage harvester or butt raking, spreading fertiliser, spreading slurry. And nobody back and out. The teachers at the school loved it. It's like, oh, what have you been up this weekend, <laughs> up to this weekend, then? Mm -hmm. Oh, we finished off the silage and oh, we're doing this and doing that. Now, because I've got children, mm -hmm. You're looking at it and going, my dad must have been off his head. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> do, you, do you think part of that is though that, because I think that too, like the things you used to do, and, you, and it's like, is that because tractors were smaller and less I, less fancy? Like, I think so, but then we were running big machines back then. We had, we had a 185 horsepower tractor. It was a monster for the time. So, yeah. and then self-propelled forage harvester. So we had the toys there. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But it's but even when you look at my nephew, he's ten, and you're like, wow. Would you send him out in your fent? No. <laughs> <laughs> but, just... but I think I don't know if it was because that's the only choice Dad I was had. Say, you yeah. have the option. That's the difference. Yeah. You Where the now it's like mm -hmm. not safe enough. Machinery's too dear for you to go and just but have a moment thing, and I mean, catch something. Yeah, I mean nowadays, like you'd get the jail. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like like you would, mm -hmm. you'd, you'd you'd get the jail if yeah. you sent your kid out to drive a tractor. Because I think it's something like thirteen is the legal age for a child to even be in the tractor, mm -hmm. but sitting beside you. But is a tractor dangerous when they're in the cab? But then you've got Maybe to look at about it, but. if you were if you were in an accident with that tractor. But in my the way I look at it is, would I rather have my child sitting beside me, strapped in with a seatbelt in the seat that's obviously been designed for a child because it's not designed for an adult or let them run about playing on their bike in a yard where you're trying to work mm. I would rather have them sitting there you know where they are well I thought that was the old thing the safest place for them but was in the tractor beside mm -hmm. you I've also thought about it well if I roll this tractor it just has head to go out that window mm -hmm. and that's it or he forgets to put his seatbelt on and then he gets rumbled round the cab. But you could argue that same argument it's, it's, it's in a car. anywhere in a car. Yep. Like, when did you last roll a tractor? I know. <laughs> Aye, like, do you know what I mean? If you know, live your whole I life know, that I way, know, like, like, we better not cross this road just in case, yeah. you know, there's somebody yeah. speeding or a drunk driver coming along. It's like, it's a bloody tough You've, you've, you've mm -hmm. still got to live. You have, you have. But um, tractors are a, a bit um, probably more advanced than cars now. It, the probably actual safety in the cab isn't much better though, is it? It's I would, yeah, I would say the technology and it's probably further on in a car, but I would say for safety, it's not changed that much, I would say, in the past 10, 15 years. Uh, the only tractor I had that was really great when I had the right young ones, like when they were toddlers, they were in their baby seats, was my fast track. And you had second seat right there, mm -hmm. Three point harness, same as a car. Yeah. And and I remember taking Emily one day, sat the car seat and they're strapped in like how you would in the car. Mm -hmm. And it was in there solid, you could give it a shake and it shook the seat. Yeah. Yeah. To me, I thought that's the safest a child of that age can be Aye. in a farming environment. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Are you big into tractors? I would say so, yeah. Oh yes. Would you like watch videos of people driving tractors? 
Absolutely. I do do a wee bit. Do a wee bit. No, but he's he, but he is like he's an actual. We're going to get onto that. But he's actually a contractor as well. Right. Like okay. he contracts a big in a big way yeah. with the well, the spray and your main thing. We we'll just we'll just do the. Let's do it now. Let's. Well, I want to get into the story though about um, you going to America and stuff. Yep. Do that and then we'll come back to the spray and tell us about yeah. obviously your, your after school. What, so what, after school, how, how what does your dad say? There's a job here. There's not a job here. Well, basically. We were all told the same thing. Dad says, you cannot come and work at home. And we were kind of like scratching our head, well, you kind of need us. Mm-hmm. But he said, no, you can't come in. You need to go away, work for somebody else, and fully appreciate what it's like to be an employee. So when you actually employ somebody, you can treat them right. And also to be able to kind of bounce off them a wee bit, have a wee working relationship. Because mm-hmm. there's nothing worse when you're working with somebody and it's just dry. You're telling me. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> All these things you're saying here, I'm like, oh, no. move on to the next bit. I get your point. I get your point. I know, I know. Okay, so you went to America and got... <laughs> That's it. So I always enjoyed the combining. And for us, combining 100 acres, it's five days of just pure hell. Because it's, oh, the rain's coming. Oh, can he bail that? Combine's caught fire. God, what do we do? <laughs> uh, and I wanted to go and experience that properly where you went and done three, four months of combining on a big estate or a big arable farm. That would be, I think, what year, like 96. I got offered a chance to go work for somebody with robotic milkers. And new to the area, mm-hmm. new, to, new to agriculture at that time. Mm-hmm. I thought, oh, cracking. Don't have to actually physically milk them. This is going to be brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> Was I wrong? So worked for that chap for a year, went to college, and that really set me up for college. That got me. I had experience there where a lot of guys had the qualifications and both straight off of school, straight in, eh, where I had the experience. So I was planning to do a three-year, so I was hoping to get to an HND. Yeah, the first year flew through because you were in the classroom, then what you learnt in the classroom, you were doing the practical work. Mm-hmm. And it was... I, I really, really did enjoy it. And then got to the end of the year, a lot of folk were going to fill pots. And What's I, that? So that was a big, big, big arable farmer down in the southeast England. And I'd applied through adverts and Scottish Farmer, Farmers Weekly. It was about 20 odd farms I'd sent my application off to. Not a peep from any of them. My God. Imagine that nowadays. I know. Maybe before you knew. I know. <laughs> and one day I got a phone call from a chap from. Dorset. So I thought, ah, ideal. Aunt stays New Forest, stay with her, just zoom back and forward. So myself, and mum went down. I went and met the chap. And it was a big pig farm, a bit arable. And I just didn't gel with the guy. Mm-hmm. And I asked him, I don't know how many times, what kind of jobs are we doing? It's whatever I give you in the morning. I said, will it be carting grain? Will I be shifting pig muck or working with the pigs? I'll be, just be what I'll tell you to do and that's it. And you're like, nah, this is not going to work. Mm-hmm. Mm. So I come back, aunt was upset. She wasn't getting her favourite <laughs> <laughs> to stay with her. And we're just about to leave. Got a phone call from a man in Suffolk. And he was like, hi, Andrew, we've just been let down. Would you be able to talk for five minutes so we can see if you're going to be ideal for this situation? I said, tell you what, I'll do one better. I said, oh, it's... Half nine and out, I says, lunchtime. I'll be in your yard at lunchtime. Give me your postcode. I'll be there. And he's like, you cannot get from Glasgow <laughs> to Ipswich. This isn't going to work. <laughs> he's like, no, you're having a laugh here. And I was like, no, no, I'll be there. And I had this feeling when I went down his driveway. And I still have it when I go visit him. Mm-hmm. It's like, this just feels right. Yep. I said, hi, Sean. I said, I'm Andrew Welsh. I said, spoke to Robert this morning. And he's like, how did you get here? <laughs> <laughs> That's not for you to worry about. Uh, uh, Consider my, my, uh, my audition. <laughs> I know. So Robert and Sean showed me around the farm and I remember walking into this big shed and it had all the toys. It was 300 horsepower tractors, two big massive combines. And I just turned to them. I said, don't try and tease me. I'm never going to get to drive any of these. Uh-huh. And they were like, well, at least you know you're here to do the the lowest of the low jobs. Aye, I said, yeah. well, show me what I'm going to be doing. And it was hedge cutting, muck spreading. Because they had, they had 300 pure British Frisian cows there as well. So 
And uh, at this time, you'd only have, what, 120, 130? No, we, we were still up kind of 250, Mark. Even back, what, back in 96? Yep. Yeah. So you've stayed, right, okay. Yeah. Aye. So I accepted the job, and they left and went there for for the summer, and I stayed for three weeks more than I should have. And the day I left, well, I left like two in the morning, I was home, emptied my car straight to college. But you wanted to leave it as late as possible? I, I wanted to work right up until I could to make as much money because I was on... Oh, so you were like combine or something then went straight hey, for no, that? We were, at that time we were seeding. And, right, so and, I, and, and I was on 12.50 an hour then. Right. Oh my God. So I maximised my hours, drove home, emptied my motor straight to college for the first day of college for my second term. Mm-hmm. And it was... I hated it. It was, it was all about socialising and... Uh, nothing to do with agriculture. No, like, Such a farmer. Socialising. It was hell. I can't, <laughs> I can't think of it was. I know. But no, it was, it was nothing to do with agriculture. And I was like, <laughs> and I was paying for it. Didn't mm-hmm. have free tuition. Oh, aye. This is so, pre-Scottish government. So I would be paying two and a half, three thousand quid for a year. And I'm like, so that was a farmer inside me. You're getting ripped off. Aye. Yeah. <laughs> you're, just like, you're just left twelve pound fifty an hour, as many hours as you want I know. to go and pay somebody. I know. Yeah. Basically, mm-hmm. what I've made in two months is gone. To end and up with that job that you're doing anyway. I know. So I tried to stick it out. Spoke to the year tutor. Told him how I felt, and he said, "Well, you can't really get out of it." And he says, "Unless you can come up with a really good excuse why you want to get out." I had an interview at Edinburgh. And they just went through it and was like, why do you believe that you're not getting taught properly? And I said, well, we're getting shown how to set a plough up with a video from Dowsville. Five for a plough. This is how you set it up. Go out in the field, two for a plough that turns the wrong way. I said, we're getting taught one thing and then mm-hmm. we've got to try and figure it out, do it another way. I mm-hmm. says, no, I said, you should be going to a dealership. You should be going to McNeys or Montgomery's and going, can we get a demonstrator tractor and your demonstrator plough? Mm-hmm. And show us the farmer of the future. And that's what I kept pushing to them. We're the farmers of the future. Stop showing us what my mum got taught. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. They let me go one Sunday morning. Mum come and woke us up. I was hungover. And she's like, there's somebody from England on the phone looking for you. So I was like, yep. I hear it was Robert. So I'm like, oh, God, got to try and go sober yeah, so up. Oh, the milk and sorry. And I'm like, oh. Trying to wake myself up here, and he was like, "How's things going, Andrew? Oh, I've left college. Oh, that's a pity, but that, that oh, that's not too bad, though, right? Right, we can work around that." I said, "I haven't arranged, Robert. I said I'm coming back for the summer. Oh, could you come down earlier?" I said, "When would you want me down?" He says, "Monday." <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> I was like, hey, "I'm kind of in a full time job just now, but I said it is arranged. I'm coming for harvest with this guy, and he." I said, I'll go speak to him, because foot and mouth had hit at that point. Right, yeah. And it was getting very close. I said, I'll go speak to him, because... My, getting close to him, not getting close to us. Or, it was getting, I mean, it was getting, getting, close, close, us, getting but, close to Ayrshire. Okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, so see. Dad was starting to get a wee bit panicky. And you're travelling between two mm-hmm. farms, you're travelling 12 miles. Yeah. Uh, so Dad had kind of questioned what I was doing. Uh, yeah, yeah, your current job at, yeah. here, yes. At Irvine. So I went and seen... The farmer at Irvine, and they said to him, I says, just been offered a big job. The guys that I spoke about, and he says, You talk about it all the time, Andrew. Don't let, don't let, don't let me stop you. <laughs> so please just go. I'll stop you right <laughs> now. I, I don't know. He said, just... If I hear about these robots again <laughs> one more time in these British Frisians, I know. <laughs> he's like, Just go do it. He said, It's what you want to do. Don't all let right. me stop you. He says, I was going to speak to you tomorrow about. He's worrying about foot and mouth as foot well. Foot and mouth as yeah, well. Yeah. I come back that Sunday afternoon from there, packed my stuff, and I was heading to Suffolk Monday but, morning. But I take it they hadn't had foot and mouth in Suffolk? They hadn't had foot and mouth, but I had to drive through it all to get there. And so I went a full, a full disinfectant when you arrived? So I had to go see the Department of Agriculture in Suffolk, and, right. and I was, my car was hosed to the max. Mm-hmm. 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 And it was. It got to the stage. It's like are you even mixing water with that disinfectant. It's like, am I going to have so any strong. paint left? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and that was me. I was allowed to go to the farm. But even at that, uh, Robert wouldn't let me take my car down his red end. Aye, fair. It went into the house he gave me to to stay in. 
and that was fair enough. Yeah. And I, I just went and bought new work clothes and stuff. Just I didn't want it on my neck. Oh, 100%. God, no. So that's how it started there. I was there for eight months, working away. They had 18 guys in this estate, all worked there from when they left school. So it shows you so, the kind of employer it was. Yep. Can, can we give this guy a shout? What's his surname? So Robert Robert Rouse. From Robert Rouse. Dennington Hall Farms, Suffolk. There we go. Good and on. And I take my hat off to him to what experience he gave me. He got he got my foot in the door to whatever everything else that happened after that. A, a lot of jobs that you wouldn't get a chance to do, or just the scale, no. you wouldn't get a chance. You could dabble in it, but not get to where I've got to with it. Yeah, because by the sheer amount just, you had to do. Yeah, I've got to take my hat off to him because it, he trusted me. But in this farm, most of the guys were in their 50s, early 60s. They were getting to the retiring age, and there's 18 of them. So I turns up in the mess room, so that's where we had our lunch. And they're like, what are you doing down here, Andrew? What are you doing back? I was like, I was asked to come down. It seemed to be quite important to be here quite quick. Something to do with drilling beans and uh, getting ready for the season so they were all a wee bit puzzled like why because they were all twiddling their thumbs it's, they, didn't, they didn't have enough work for them mm-hmm. and they I got got told what was going to be happening and they I was like wow they were going to basically make most of them redundant and I remember Sean telling me the manager it was because I come down head down just got on with it like when I was there as a for the harvest job I was hedge cutting pulling out tram lines with subsoiler, spreading sewage sludge, or not sewage sludge, beet sludge from the beet factory, spreading dung, stacking, but I stacked over 6,500 bales in two two months as an extra. Mm-hmm, <laughs> mm-hmm. And I just, I had a list. I spoke to the cultivation guys. Sean was in one of the combines, kept in contact with them. And I just was left free reign. As long as I got the job done, they were happy. So I was working 18, 20 hours a day, rolling it in, going, mm-hmm. why did they give me a house? I'm not, not even <laughs> I <didn't> going in <laughs> it. <laughs> worked there, worked there for four years and done exceptionally well. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was sprayer operator of the year, 2003. I was combine driver. Who does those the... awards? On the farm? Uh, no, these are, these are, <laughs> <laughs> I know, oh, only, only guy in it. You're oh, that yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, it's like your dad's been uh, milker of the year I at know. home for uh, 40 years in a row. That's right, he was only one in the competition. I, I, I. But uh, no, it was so a Farmers Weekly, done it, still do it. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, Fusty, they call it. Right. So, Farm, <laughs> farm Spare <laughs> Operator of the Year. <laughs> you were the Fusty. I was a Fusty, Fusty, Fusty guy. Fusty will be a Scottish word. Yeah. Aye. That'll, be, that'll be why Farmers Weekly do it, surely. Aye. That won't be an English word, does it? No. Fusty. No, no. Fusty. Fusty. Okay. I think it was, so I didn't get too settled in the job. It's like, right, let's give him another challenge. And I've got you up mm. your game to and, uh, win this let's award. See, let's see how far we can push him. And he... Uh, it's Remember. one of those good wee... Uh, it's just a wee booster. Confidence booster Aye. and... Mm-hmm. and uh, And I remember the yeah, judges incentive. coming. Mm-hmm. Sean had told us, make sure you get your sprayer all washed up. There's folk coming to see it. I knew nothing about... I didn't even tee up, you're about to get judged. Nah. Oh, yeah, so it was, so it was end, thrown in the deep end. Well, 2002 and 2003 was a combine driving one. That was where a chap came out and measured how many losses we had and all that. It was quite simple. It's it's basically, it was math based. It was basically you've done your job right. You're mm-hmm. combining to the best that combine can do it. Good man. And then from there, because I'd won that, the New Holland dealership was like, this guy seems to know what he's talking about. So I got the chance to go to America with New Holland, and it was to see the CR nine eighty combine that was built for America, and for the bigger countries, Australia and that, drier countries, and it was never to come to. Europe, but we were getting to go over and see it, so we went over there and seen it, looked at it, seen it running, pointed out what was wrong with it, and then before we knew it, we had one. Is that right? And As in your, your boss bought one? Or no, they, we, they, we were given one to, to play with, so it's still still in Europe, still probably one of the better combines out there. But then is this one a case of like everything's bigger now, so at the time they thought this was far too big for the UK, it but was, now it's They just didn't reckon it would handle the wetter conditions. Okay. Uh, they just didn't think it was going to suit Europe. Mm. Uh, but with the wee tweaks they made of it, it's it's there and it's doing well. Uh, but with that, I got to see a bit of America. And it was like, oh, this is a place to go. Mm-hmm. Applied for a job out there. And this chap, Lance Frederick, 
gave us a phone call, I want to come and visit you. And, and in my head, I'm like, Christ, it's a fair distance to come just to say hello. But no, it's just, they start saying, just want to have a talk with you. And they spoke to me about the spraying and combining and why I was down in Suffolk and why I was not up in Scotland. And he offered me a job, so I took it. That was another massive experience. That so was. what age were you then? So I was 23 when I went out to America. The glory days. And is this like these ones you imagine? It's like you drive for a mile, then turn and come back? Was it things it like is, that? It's, yeah, it was a 2,000 mile harvest. So we were combining from Texas right up to the Canadian border. And uh, wait, so the, the, ent- the total area that your contractor did was 2,000 miles long? Yep, so basically... So that's like double the UK? Yep. Mad, isn't it? Yep. Double the length of the UK. So you basically contract and basically, if you look at the American map, right from basically <laughs> the Mexican border to the Canadian border, right through the middle, right through the grain belt. And well, the, con- the contractor did right up the whole length? Yep, so like for some of the driving I'd done moving machinery a day's driving non-stop was nothing to get to the next customer it was it was just next level most foragers don't supply sheep and cattle with enough cobalt copper iodine and selenium critical to digestion immunity reproduction and growth when it comes to supplementation there's a danger of under or oversupply but when bolusing with Animax Tracio, you can be sure every animal has enough for up to six months in one single application. Animax, giving what it takes. Anyway, so I end up getting to drive his main lorry, this W900 that nobody was allowed to touch. Mm-hmm. It was only a year old at that time. Nobody was even allowed to get in this truck. It was a proper big American truck, W900L. So it was a long wheelbase. Had a, I know it's something you'd get here. No. The actual tractor unit was 28 feet long, bumper to bumper. Why uh, did he give it to you? He just thought I was the guy that could run that and make him the most money. And it was, it was, it's what everybody wants to drive. It's what you see in the movies, like your big Peter Bill's a big massive square hood. Everybody's like, what are you doing in that? And I'm like, that's what I'm driving for harvest. Oh my God. And they, imagine they're all just bitching about them oh, in the coffee, weren't they? Uh, uh, no, no, I, 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 yeah. made, I made hundreds of friends that year. And he helps being Scottish as well. It eh? does. Americans does. like yeah, the Scots. But it always helped when you get pulled over. Oh, did on, it? on average, twice a week. Is that right? I get caught one night moving oversized. It's illegal. Oh, it's not illegal. It's a grey area. Nobody really knows the rules of when you should stop hauling oversized when it gets dark. Oh, okay. When you read the rules on it, maybe that's when my dyslexia helped. I read it wrong, and they went, like "Well, that. well, it's you kind of can do it, so I'm going to do it." Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I get caught mm-hmm. in Nebraska doing silly speeds with a truck sitting at 17 feet wide and 100 odd feet long, and talked my way out of it. It was being Scottish, just being, just been, just been honest with the well, guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was just it's like I, I, I honestly, honestly, I didn't think I'd get caught. No, it was that's, like, that's the honesty. No, no. Honestly, I thought I'd get away with it. I thought it was too dark. Aye. No, honestly, I, I thought you'd see me. Honestly, what I said to him was, honestly, I thought there'd been an accident here. I didn't realise this was all for me. <laughs> <laughs> I assumed you were chasing some guy behind me. I know. <laughs> no, they basically had been caught with a helicopter and they basically had a roadblock for us. But I was, I was a, <laughs> the speed limit for the road was 55 and I was over 100 miles an hour. It was in a lorry. In a lorry. That was, was basically like you hand over your license, they get the scissors and cut it, and I go home. And I sat and chatted to him. He's like, "Right, I'll just give you a speeding ticket for like five miles an hour over the speed limit." And that's what happened. I went and paid it the next morning. And you get a bit of punishment. He gets his quota. Yeah, everybody's happy. Everybody's happy, and they got their money for the fine the next day. Mm-hmm. Boss, well, he knows as soon as your license swiped, he knows you've been pulled over. Aye, aye. And, he, and he's like, how'd you get away with that? I think we found the real reason he got to drive and got to do all these jobs. It wasn't that he thought it was his right hand, it was, it was expendable. Yeah. His <laughs> other boys had families and all that. And, and, and he could. I, it's like, send him. <laughs> exactly. He'll, if he loses his license, who cares? I know. I know. Like, he'll yeah. horse on at 100 mile an hour. <laughs> Nate like, right. likes him anyway. No, I, thought, I know. I know. <laughs> I, I see in the office, are you going? You go, and on you go. You shot on the head, we'll catch you up. <laughs> Toyed with the idea, staying out there. But then it was extremes. 
it was extreme cold to extreme heat. It was no grass to tons of grass. It was from cattle surviving to cattle dying. Mm-hmm. And I remember leaving there, coming home, and he was asking if I was going to come back. And I'd done a lot of different things for him. Where I would be with dyslexia was struggling. But I got got round it and got it. And I just, I just said to him when I left, I said, you know, I'm dyslexic. Said, yeah, I knew that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, that, and that's something we should probably have kind of skimmed over a wee bit um, when you're talking through your school thing and stuff we should talk a bit about the dyslexia thing because it will impact a lot of people in farming yep. in agriculture you can you can cover it up quite easily where any other occupation it will really show but it does affect more folk than what you think and it and it's not just one set thing it could be some folk could struggle reading some folk can struggle working with numbers uh, some folk can struggle just with focusing and uh, organising things. Uh, so it's not just one set thing. Uh, How much yours? About everything. <laughs> so, okay, yeah. so, you're getting a good one. Yeah, so yeah, so through primary school, you were just kind of pushed aside, treated as just stupid. And then when I went to secondary school, that's where it probably affected us more because you were having to do well so that you got what you wanted at the end of it mm-hmm. and struggled a bit. But when I went to Loudoun, that'll be when they started having pupil support. Some folk asked, what do you see in the page? And it's, it's a bit like the Matrix. It's just kind of all mumble jumbo. You can't quickly just look at a page and go, oh, that's that's saying that. Everything's slower. Yeah, yeah but, but I, th- I mean, I think it's incredible that obviously your main thing now is spraying. Yep. You know, you, you, you're, you've got a big fancy self-propelled spray and stuff. It's probably one of the most maths heavy jobs yep. in farming. Yep. It's working and with chemicals and spray ratios and numbers are not too bad with me. Um, okay. Like all the studies that have been done on a uh, dyslexia, you're not stupid. It's just you can't get the information out. The information's up here. Mm-hmm. It's physically getting it written down or even like if you were at reading a question, you read the question wrong. So your answer's going to be wrong straight away. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Remember questions in maths used to be like so wordy. Oh, it's like, like maths mm-hmm. exams. Oh, Tom, Tommy had six apples and he bought two bananas. How yep. many oranges did, did he have? Aye. And, yeah, and if you read you, that all wrong, you're like, oh. The whole thing's a mess. But uh, one thing that always puzzled me about dyslexia is why for something like dyslexia I make it such a hard word? It was probably because a dyslexic person wrote that word down. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. It should have and been. I can get away with that. <laughs> you can get away with that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, all right. Okay. I like that. So, uh, so, name it yourself, whatever you want. Okay. That's fine. Oh, there we go. Here's, like, here's, here's, here's some that? letters. Yeah. Okay. Ah, right, yeah. Okay. That's a good no, I like, I've never heard that no, idea before, funny. but I like that. But Bye. no, so, so, through school wasn't brilliant for me. I got to admit that. I remember one English teacher. She's like, no, oh, you're just stupid. How do you expect to be a vet when you can't even write? And, this is that right? Said, oh, it was, oh, it was evil, evil stuff. And he, and then went home that night. Mum had already had a phone call from an English teacher, and all Mum gave me was this little yellow book, but this this size. She'd give that to that English teacher, and tell her to read it. And it was all about dyslexia. Yeah, okay. And yeah. how how it affects you, and how mm-hmm. how the studies had figured out what was going on. But it just shows you the teachers weren't clued up oh, on yeah, it. Then. Yeah, but yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, so that would be mid nineties. I've got a question about Loudon back in the mid nineties. Did you go to school with a boy that played William Wallace in Braveheart? He came from Loudon Academy. Did he? Yeah. Right. But when uh, that would be mid, uh, he would be. I didn't know that. I know. Yeah. I, know I know the. I can see the boy's the face. Guy. I, but uh, obviously you would. Like, you would know if you were at Bloody I'll, I'll be going home tonight and find the Braveheart. What year it was? Yeah, I, yeah. Because. If you were at school with him, you would know that. Of course you would, because uh-huh. it's huge. But he was a massive star. So, uh-huh. But there you go. He went to Loudoun Academy. Uh-huh. Yeah. No, I didn't know that. So, The farm, you're obviously farming in partnership now. If we fast track maybe a bit more towards today, yep. you, just a touch a bit on, I'd like to go a bit into the spraying thing, because we probably never have another professional sprayer on to talk about this. So explain a bit. like self, Self-propelled self spraying, you've got a big fancy machine that costs a fortune, yep. so you don't need a tractor. I don't need to hook anything on. I can jump in that machine. So it is, it's what it says on the tin. It's self-propelled. Yeah, I really enjoyed the spraying side when I was down in England. Done a bit of spraying out in America. And there was a chap, Ian Howie, yeah, that done spraying in Ayrshire. 
And I phoned him up and I said, Ian, if you're needing a driver, so you can have a day off, give us a shout. And he told me it's not worth it. The time you put somebody in the seat and then you get a wet day and you only get a half day and that's what you do for the rest of the day. He said, it's not worth it. And kind of left it that. I went and bought my own sprayer for doing her own at home. Uh, and then one day, we were building my brother's workshop at the time. Ian turned up and he... And Ian's the kind of guy, you can have a laugh with him, but when he's serious, he's serious. Mm -hmm. And he turned up, I was right up at the top of the apex of this shed, and he just went, Andrew, I need a word with you. And I'm like, cripes, what have I done wrong? So I shimmied down. And he's like, right, you want to do contract spraying? Buy my sprayer and just get on with it. I'm like, what do you mean? He says, you buy my sprayer, you get the work. Mm -hmm. And he says, I've had enough. So I said to Dad, and I says, well, and I'll have a piece of the pie. And it's something different. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we kind of looked at it. We had his accounts to see what he was roughly bringing in. And it was reasonable for a wee add-on. You've got, you got to remember, it's only six months work a year. Yeah, yeah. I get into that. So that was 2007. And where's the, the whole business between spraying and the farm at home? Where's the future going to be? The spraying is good, but it's not what makes us our money. What makes us our money is our cows. Yep. Uh, and I think it will get to the stage where the spraying will have to be moved on. And, and is there still quite a lot of debt on the farm? Like, obviously, you uh, say about your dad. Th there is. We bought a farm 10 years ago, the farm I stay at, so that was ah, a big okay, scud of money as expanded. well. Yeah. Uh, and that was, most of that was borrowed money, so. Did you take a hammer on recently when the interest rates went up, or were you oh, locked aye. in? I took a hammer on. Aye. Yeah. So then, I think everybody must do the same a wee bit on fix and a wee bit on variable. But then Dad bought a farm uh, when interest rates were at 17%. And I always look back at what our farm started off with and how many workers Dad and his brother had and what we've got now. You're kind of like, what were you doing, Dad? And uh, you had four or five workers. Aye. And you didn't have the cattle but we've got now. The, the big argument all the time, because folk bring out that statistic, especially maybe people of a certain generation, like your father and, and that, and they'll say, oh, you know, we bought a house at 17% interest and all that. You don't know how good you've got it. But the house was a damn sight cheaper Aye. than they are now. You know, well, there's, a, there's a good statistic. Like, I don't know about farms. I imagine farms would be pretty similar. Aye. But like, a house used to be two times your salary. Now, it's the average house is like seven times your salary. Aye. Well, yeah. and, and, you know, yeah. seven... And eight, folk would love to pay 18% interest on a house that's two times the salary now. Yes. You, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like I'd pay 20% interest on it. Mm -hmm. yeah. But, you know, that, and that's the statistic that folk will out. But, but even, like, I know I know all the farms we've bought over the, the generations. Like, Grandpa, the first farm he bought, he couldn't even get a silage trailer for that now. So, <laughs> so it was <laughs> Buy it for the wool clip. That was old thing. <laughs> the wool clip when I bought you a farm. I know. But, uh, and then... Mum and Dad bought the main farm, Warnetland, and myself and my brother brought a forage harvester that was more than that 10 years ago. Crazy. That was when Dad had his first heart attack. Mm -hmm. <laughs> aye, 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 aye. aye. Uh... No, that, that one was, see, we told him what we'd spent on the forage harvester and the next day he was in hospital. Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> that's a true story. It's a true story. Aye, aye. aye. But uh, so there was a farm that Dad bought in the 80s and we bought a forage harvester right around 2014. For the same money for for dad had got a stead and, and 200 odd acre Aye. for the same price so is my son going to go buy a bit of machinery in 20 years time for one point some odd million i think <laughs> you spent for your place Aye. 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 is that the way it's going probably. it's it's a good point actually Aye. probably just the way inflation's yeah. going it's just no, it's, like mad having a family business is it's tough you've you're always kind of like, I don't, I don't want to upset them, but I really want to make this point. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I don't want to upset them. And I think you've got to get rid of that kind of, don't want to upset them. I think you'll upset them more by just letting it drag out. I think you're better just going, just pulling both barrels and going, no, nah, I don't think you should have done that. And uh, we're doing it this way. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's, it's, it works with a family if the fam if you've got that family thing of quick to forgive, like quick to anger, aye. quick to forgive. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean, my sister? would row all the time mm -hmm. but forget about it you know yeah, go over right. it five minutes later and move on plus I kind of have to forgive you exactly <laughs> don't That's you nice. Aye. but no but, but I would say being dyslexic and having a farm running eh, I do 
a lot of the books as well for the farm. So use dyslexia as an excuse. <laughs> well, that's why I got to that figure. <laughs> oh, I like it. I like it when the farm assurance guy comes. It's like, oh, Andrew's doing it. Uh, he's dyslexic, oh, by no. the way. Uh, but, his no, cows? But, but it has, I'd say it has definitely ear tags. Wow. Or reading freeze branding numbers. You've never seen such chaos. Oh, you, you just make I, it, get it wrong. That's like, oh, that's, that's a, what's your tag on that one, Andrew? That's 2536. And you can write that down. Then you'll be, you'll be like half an hour into the job and it's like, oh no, there's there's three six again. Uh-huh. Oh no. And you go look at that tag and you're like, it's definitely three six. You're like, well, was that six three? Or was it even a two five? <laughs> <laughs> so then it's like, oh, the cattle back through again. <laughs> That's the worst way. Mum's spent like three hours looking for a, a passport and you're like, I'll go check that number again in the ear tag. And you're like, sorry, Mum, it was this. <laughs> I, I just love the belief in them that they still let them read the tags. I know. <laughs> I know. That's family. It's the first thing I'd be changing but, to but te- the system. Te- technology. I can't, I, can't, I can't wait until we get our wee magic wand for our ear tags and bleep. Yeah, yep. there's none of that. That is the number. That is it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Cannot be wrong. It's but even important. like you were saying, the job I'm in, it's chemicals, you need to know what the chemical is, eh, what the buffer zones are for it, what the litres per hectare. A lot of that's on my worksheet that I get from the agronomist. But Google Translate, take a picture, you do lens, highlights all the writing on the picture, shove that copied text into Google Translate, play, reads it out for you. That's clever. Yeah. Right, okay. So if MD even sends me a long-winded email... Best one, solicitors. Oh, yeah, it's Send me a bit, and and, and, and that, it, ha, it has to be right. Yeah. And you're like, right. And then you just put that through Google Translate. Yeah. And the best thing with that is you can have it on the screen. It's reading it out, but you're following the words. Mm-hmm. And that's the way you can train your brain very quickly how the words look to you and how they sound. And then you start making a connection. Yeah. yeah. But no, but there is wee tricks and stuff out there. Or I've even I've even done full emails. Voice notes, great. Voice yeah, notes. Voice it's not hundred percent. Doesn't like Scottish for some reason. <laughs> well, voice notes okay, but I the the dictation mm. uh, waste of time. Die. There's bound to be farmers listening that will think that's a, a, a great little thing to add to their it is and it's their collection. And if any of your listeners are suffering from dyslexia and like, wow, he's done that. How can I do that? If they want to talk to me. Yep. Come and come and talk to us. Yeah, yeah, I'll tell you. I'll tell you wee tricks and stuff. I'll, that I'll stick your email address on the yep. uh, on but, the show notes. Yeah, okay. but MD, MD, I would say MD that's going through exams. Definitely ask for a reader scribe. Mm-hmm. Just keep reading. I was an Australian. It was one of the Australians I worked with in America. His mother told me never stop reading. Always keep reading. Train yourself. Yeah, and always just keep doing wee bits and bobs. Don't you're you're learning every day when you're dyslexic. Yeah, and you are. Mm-hmm. I re- almost relearn if you let it go yep. too long. Restart. Yep. Yeah. And it's, it's just just resetting your brain again. It's just getting whatever the message going for your eyes, your brain, getting it sorted out to the language it's telling you, not yeah. the language that's on the paper. Yeah, great advice. And, and before I wrap up, uh, you like all your tractors, not do you prefer grassmen or the sheep game? It's a tough one. Tough one. You can be honest. Can, can I be honest? No. Mm-hmm. One answer. Wait, where's the door? One honest answer. <laughs> Gra- grass, grass men are, are fun, but but no, sheep games factual. Ah, oh, like it, like it. Oh, good stuff. And then on that note, that's the podcast over. Cheers, folks.